Greetings, chemistry students. Today, we're going to look at energy changes in a chemical reaction. And so there's a couple of terms that we looked at very briefly way back at the beginning of the semester, but we're going to look at it again. Um, exothermic is a reaction that releases heat. Exo meaning out and therm meaning heat. So the heat comes out of the reaction. Um, an example of that would be a fire uh, where heat is a product of the reaction and delta H, the change in heat energy, uh, if you take AP chemistry, you'll learn this term is technically called enthalpy, is negative because the reaction loses heat. It goes out into the surroundings, which you are a part of, and so it gives off heat. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs heat where heat is a reactant, heat goes into the reaction, delta H is positive. If this reaction were being conducted and heat is being absorbed from the surroundings of which you are a part, then you would feel colder as a result. A chemical ice pack is one of those instant ice packs that you squeeze and it then gets cold is an example of an endothermic reaction. And then we're going to look at potential energy diagrams to help us understand this a little better. They show the energy changes in a reaction. They also show what's called the activation energy, which is the energy that's needed to initiate or to start a reaction. So this right here shows the heat energy on the y-axis, and it shows the reaction progress on the x-axis as we go from reactants up to the activation energy and then down to products. The difference from the reactants to the top of this hill right here is called the activation energy. And then the difference from the reactants to the products is our change in energy, which you can see is negative. Energy is lost in this reaction, meaning it is exothermic. An example of that is the combustion of butane. Uh, you may be familiar that butane from a lighter will burn in the presence of oxygen. But if I just press this little button to let the gas out, nothing happens. You need to provide some energy to initiate that reaction through the striker, all right? Now, once you do that, since this reaction is exothermic and releases heat, the energy from the combustion is enough to sustain and supply the activation energy to keep it going. You don't have to continually keep striking the lighter but there is an activation energy that is required. This reaction, on the other hand, is endothermic. As the reaction proceeds, energy goes in. The difference in the reactants and the products, that's your delta H. And then this is your activation energy. A good example of an endothermic reaction is baking a cake. You have to keep putting energy into it to bake it by putting it into the oven which puts energy into the cake constantly. You can't just stick it in the oven real quick to give it the activation energy and have the reaction keep going. You have to keep it in the oven to keep the baking process underway. Um, this shows what would happen if you catalyze a reaction. What a catalyst does is it lowers this activation energy barrier so that the uh, reactants can more easily get to the products. They don't have to have as much energy to proceed from reactants to products. And so it makes the reaction happen faster.